Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm jumping on really quickly to do an intro clip for the parts that I filmed last night. I filmed the finishing video of the Love Poppets Night Rider Sal from Claire. I absolutely love how this turned out. I was gifted the kit, but I would have bought it if she hadn't reached out and asked if I'd like to join it in because it is absolutely gorgeous. So this is how I fully finished the piece. I will have the supplies listed down below. Most of the supplies I picked up from the range and nearly all of them are, except for the little foam roses, are currently available online. But you can use whatever you want to finish this. Now I stitched on the 32 count, which is the same as 16 count, and it fits on my board nicely. If you were gonna do 14 count, it would be a bit big for the board. It would overhang by the corners. You could make that work if that's what you really wanted to, or just go into a store, take a piece of paper. This is cut out to fit the, my 16 count. This is how I decide which piece I'm gonna finish it on. I go into the store, I have loads of these in my bag. It's written Night Rider Sal on the back of it. What I do is I go and place it on each board and I go, okay, that would fit. And that is how I picked this board, is just by going into the range. The range for me is the cheapest place to go and buy like finishing boards. I sometimes do it online, but it's just nice and simple to go and do these. This had um, a completely different reason. It was like a family board. I painted over it and we have turned it into the spooky goodness. I do apologise, it's nice and early in the morning. So, I will insert photos at the end of this to show this in a little bit more detail. You'll see I have kept a lot of the glue gun spider webs. I actually made some more after the video um, just by putting it on a paper and just pulling it up. So I've tangled those in so it looks a little bit more like a spider web. Alright guys, I'm going to head off. I really hope you enjoy this video. If you do enjoy the video and would like to see more, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And leave me a comment down below. Would you like some more finishing videos? Are you stitching any of Claire's patterns? I, got, I picked up a few of her Christmas patterns when I saw her at the Knitting and Stitching show. Um, just a reminder, this chart is still available. Hopefully I can get this up before Sunday. So if you are at the Knitting and Stitching show, you can get a printed chart of this from her or you can go on her website and get a PDF. But this chart is now fully available and it is absolutely gorgeous to stitch. All right, I will see you all very soon. Hope you enjoy the finishing video. Let me know if you have finished this piece. Show me the finishing piece, how you are finishing it. If you're doing it in a frame like Claire, I'm sure it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. But I would love to see how you guys finish. And this video is a little bit of a challenge to show you that it doesn't have to be scary to finish. That is how I used to think and now I just enjoy it. So I will see you all very, very soon. Bye guys. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Beth. I go by the username Be More Creative both here on FlossTube and on Instagram. I'm here with a slightly different video today. I'm going to be doing a um, fully finish of the Night Rider Cell by Claire from Love Poppet. Um, I received this cell as a gift. I received the kit and I absolutely loved it. So this is 32 count even weave. It is the hand dyed one, which I'm not sure if this is still available anymore um, in the version of a kit um, for even weave, but you can definitely get the PDF chart. And because the sale has finished, you will get the whole piece all in one. I really do recommend it. It was so much fun to stitch. Um, I have loved both of the sales that I've taken part with for Love Pop It. I have also I pick up a lot of her um, charts I'm also part of her patron I just love her designs in general um, so we are going to be jumping straight in with the finish so this video is um, I'm not entirely sure how it is going to go I'm trying to get it finished tonight but it is currently 12 minutes past 11 at night on Friday night um, I am technically on call so um, for those of you who know, I live and work in a boarding school. 
my students are all settled for the night so hopefully they won't need anything but I may have to um, pause or answer the phone so I do apologise if that rings um, I will try and edit it out as much as possible. So I'm going to be finishing this piece here. Now Claire showed her finish and it was in a gorgeous frame. I actually got to see it at the Knitting and Stitching show and I do love it framed but I struggle personally with framing things because if they're not straight it really bugs me whereas if when I finish things like this if it's not 100% straight I can always hide it on things. So what I'm going to do is for now I'm just going to take my stitching piece away and I'm just going to lay it behind me and I'm going to bring out the board. So I've already painted this black. This is from the range. I think it was like $3.99. You can kind of see the outline. You can see the word story on it. It was a fat, um, it was like something about family. Every family has a story. Welcome to us, I think is what it says on here. Now I've just painted this with one coat of the Art Studio Acrylic Black Paint, which is one pound. This is also from the range. A lot of the things that I will be finishing with are from the range. Um, I can't guarantee everything will be because when I finish things, I'm not 100% certain of if I'm gonna use any extra embellishments or things, but I will try and list as much as I can down in the description box below. So, I have, just for time's sake, I have already painted this. Now, I did paint the back of mine. You really don't need to. You could, if you want to, actually finish on the back of this piece. Um, but I'm just going to finish on the front. It doesn't matter that it has a story on it because this is a foam board cut to the size. I'm just going to hide it. So I didn't even bother to try and get these off. I really don't need to. My piece will just sit over the top of them. So, I've done the base coat in black, but what I want to work on is I want to make this board a bit more Halloween-y. Now, you could just go ahead and finish your piece off, but what I am going to do is I have got my glue gun here. It's already heated up, and I am just going to just glue little blobs, okay? And I'm going to do this everywhere. I don't, it doesn't matter if it's strings. Um, I'm just going to do this around the edges in certain places because I want to make it look a little bit more cracked, if that makes sense. I want to add some texture because with this board, I'm not going to have a layer of fabric. So normally, I would have a layer of fabric. Um, so I would like have my a piece of fabric on foam board and then... I would have um, my actual stitched piece. But on this piece, I'm not gonna be doing that. So what I wanna do is I wanna add some texture in a different way. And my favorite way to do that with my finishing pieces um, for Halloween is to make them a little bit more cobweb-like. So a little bit like a gravestone, a tombstone that's got stuff hanging off of it. That is exactly what I'm doing with this part. And I'm not sure how I'm going to edit this, whether it's kind of going to be like a more real in time video or whether it is going to be um, edited so you don't have to wait around as much so we're just gonna we're just gonna see how it goes with some of these strings i am gonna pull a few of them off because they're hanging over but i am gonna leave some of them on because it just adds to the effect so i'm just gonna leave this to dry what i am gonna do is i'm just gonna grab another board quickly to show you what this is what i mean by this So I'm currently finishing um, my freebies on the 17th and I have done my little gravestones but I'm hoping you can see the raised effect this is going to have. Now unfortunately I've run out of the gold paint so I'm not going to do mine in gold but I will do it in a different way. So this dries really quickly. Um, my glue gun is just a cheap one from Hobbycraft. They go on sale every now and then for like £2.50 if not they're a fiver. Um, it's not the 
best hot glue in the world but you'll see um for things like this it's absolutely brilliant and when i do my finishing pieces i use that and another glue so i picked up these two paints so i've got the gray and i've got the metallic both of these were also a, yeah was also a pound these are just the art studio so like the range's own brand um so what i'm gonna do is find a paintbrush first of all and you will see with me and finishing i change my mind on so many different things um that it kind of feels like i'm jumping around all over the place so i'm gonna do that i'm also gonna grab i've got this little piece of packaging um that one of my knitting and stitching show things came in but i do i don't know where my paint palette is so this will do brand new paints that gonna open and all i'm gonna do with this one is i'm just gonna put why is it when i'm doing a video nothing ever works the way it should sorry it's not gonna work is it So when I took it off, I had the plastic bit. Oh, there we go. Gonna have way too much paint now, but oh well. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit on my brush and I'm gonna start by just painting over the top of the gray parts, okay? Also gonna add some next to it. Now I will go back in and change the color of this, but I always start with like a base coat so that way the rest of my paint can go on now I'm not too fast if I get it off the board like off the hot glue and it goes next to it because I am just going to be dry brushing some of that on at the end am I still in frame So I'm hoping this video goes well and you guys like it because I do I don't actually mind the finishing process I'm not actually a huge finisher um but I do finish obviously my freebies on the 17th and other bits so I wouldn't mind doing a video every now and then if anyone's interested so I've just started I've gone round with the same little bit amount of paint I put way too much paint on the thing so just ignore that now you can see where my board is going to come to on this so i don't need to worry about the stuff in the center but what i am going to do is i've just got a tiny little bit of paint left on the brush and i'm just going to dry brush in different areas now you'll see i haven't topped this paintbrush up at all from anything that i was doing earlier this is all the same thing okay now it doesn't matter what it looks like at this stage we're still going to go over it okay and realistically you're only using a tiny little bit of paint for this all right then what i'm going to do is open my pink now there was no gold and there was no silver at the time so this was like a rosy gold paint's done exactly the same thing really didn't want to get paint all over my hands but with this one I'm just going to put a little bit down now you'll see this is very very pink I definitely don't want anything this bright but I thought when we mix it in with the grey you get like a mauvey I'm not sure if that's showing in the light but you do get like a mauvey 
kind of grey. And what I'm going to do is just gently paint this over the bottom of the element. So I'm not going the whole way up, okay, but I'm just going to do this on the very tip because that way I get a little bit of glitter. going to go around the same ones now you could skip this process if you wanted and just jump straight in with just the painted board you don't need to do all the extras I just like to have a little bit of a shine to things um that's it so then what I'm going to do with this is because I've still got stuff left on I'm just going to just around the very edge kind of dry brush it over not everywhere because I tend to go a little bit overboard with things but I am going to dry brush around certain areas because I want it to look a little bit old and then I am going to go from the center out Making sure that I'm painting not with the pink. Now this part is going to be hidden. But that's why I'm just going to bring it out slightly. Okay. Because it will just peek out from those sections. Okay. What I am going to do. Is I'm just going to grab a tissue. Because I didn't think to bring any water with me. And even though my bathroom is literally about six steps that way, we're just going to paint off the excess. And then I'm going to take my black. Now with my black, I'm going to take the smallest little bit, okay? Because I don't want to hide everything that I've done. But I do want to darken this. Because I don't want it to be too bright. I'm not sure if that's even showing up on camera. It probably, the camera probably makes it look a lot brighter than it actually is. Because it's really not that bright. Now, because this paint on here is still wet, it's going to mix it together and it's going to make it look so it's not as black as the background, if that makes sense. So it's going to be a different shade of black. So I can really, I'm... I'm not even being careful with this. I am going straight in and I am smudging it around. I'm going to take a little bit more black on my thing and we're going to mix it in with some of these other areas. Now, as I said, this is completely your choice. If you don't want to do this, skip it and just finish it. It will still look absolutely great. But I love my Halloween stuff to be grungy. I want it to look like it's old. I want it to look messy. It's just how I love doing it. So let me just move this messy paint stuff out the way. Because for now, I think I'm done with the paint. Now... I say I think. When this dries back, and it will dry quite quickly, I don't know if I'm going to want to add more paint to things. But what I'm going to do is I am going to set this to one side and allow it to dry back while I move on to the next step. So I'm going to try and bring this up a little bit. Now all you are going to be able to see is the glitter from this thing. I can imagine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video for just a second. I'm going to try and take a photo of this and see if I can insert a photo of what this actually looks like currently um, in at this point because with my lights all I think you're getting is the glitter so we'll be back in just a second. So I have just moved that painting to one side and I have just wiped down my board and washed my hands because I'm now going to go on to the actual stitching. So what I have here is I have a piece of press on. Now, I use multiple different um, sticky boards 
for this or I use foam board. For this one, I'm going to be using sticky board and I've cut this down to size. So for my piece, I stitched on the 32 count, which is the same size as 16 count. And it is approximately 27 by 19 centimeters. So what I've done is I've cut the, my piece to 27 by 19 because I knew I didn't want a lot of space around it. Um, and I also knew that on my finishing board, if I went much bigger than this, it wouldn't fit. So if you're doing a 14 count, um, I should have said at the start, and I'm sorry I didn't think about it, the board will overhang on the corners. Now it still could work, um, personally that is not how I would like to do it I would probably have to find a different finishing piece but this piece does work on the 32 count or if you stitched on 16 count so what I have here is I just have a very large piece of felt so this is from one of the projects that I work on it's just a scrap so it's quite messy um, and all I'm going to do is and I do apologize I did realize that I have chipped all of my nail polish and I've got paint on my hands. Um, I am just going to stick this on and just cut this out. And I'm really sorry, my lighting has just died. So hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. If I try and bring another light over. I'm sorry, the light that I had at my desk the battery just died on it so let me see if I can bring some more lighting over here I do apologize the lighting is probably quite different now I was not prepared for that kind of thing so what I'm going to do is just quickly cut around this and then I'm going to cut it a little bit neater back on camera so I'm just going to pull this to one side so I can quickly cut There we go. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to press this on. Now, I, you could do this with quilt batting. You could do this felt. You don't even have to do this. Um, I just like to have something on my piece just to help um, kind of even out the piece a little bit, if that makes sense. Like I could sometimes, if I'm doing Christmas ornaments, I will do two pieces of felt. Or if I'm doing quilt batting, then I just need one. It just depends on the thickness. But for this piece, I'm only going to do one layer. It's a big enough piece. Um, the only reason I have it on here is it. I just feel like it softens my sides a little bit. So it doesn't make it feel um, as like tight, if that makes sense. So I've got a little bit of leeway if my sides aren't perfect, because this will kind of bend it around into place. So, I have just stuck this on. It is no way perfect, but no one's going to see it, so it doesn't really matter. What I am going to do is I'm just going to bring my stitching piece back over. And I am just going to grab my clip, so just bear with me one second when I do that. And I just use um, kind of sewing clips, like off-brand wonder clips and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out where I want the placement of my board now I'm not going to have an extremely big margin on this piece I really don't need it I'm not sure I want it and I do apologize for the lighting changing I um was just trying to move the light so I could actually see past my piece so this is going to be very tight so I just want to make sure I line this up where I want it to be and this is the part I say take your time on because if you're not happy with the placement of it you're not going to enjoy the piece now when you pull it you need to make sure that you're not distorting anything as well so I think I am quite happy with how that center looks so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip this on. I'm going to pull it tight up at the top so the board is now tight. Pull this side. Do 
the same with this one. I'm just going to pull it over a little bit to straighten out that bat. Now, there are multiple ways of finishing, okay? Um, there are no correct ways as far as I'm concerned. You do what makes you feel happier. Now, you could glue this on. You could just use your hot glue. I'm not going to. I'm actually going to um, kind of do a mixture. I am going to lace, but I might not lace the whole piece. That probably makes no sense to you whatsoever. But what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down my piece. So I know where I want it now. So I can just go in and trim off some of this excess fabric. I don't need to be working with it all. I don't need the hassle of trying to manage all of this. So now is when I'm going to start cutting things down. And I don't actually throw any of my scraps out like this piece I could stitch a word on for like a tag or something so this is just going in my off cut bin because you never know when you might need just a little piece of something okay Now, in terms of how much I'm leaving, um, I'm leaving a bit of a bigger gap, but normally I would cut it a bit closer. But because I'm showing you guys on camera, I just don't want to give myself because I'm trying to film and go around my lamp. I just want to give myself a little bit extra so it's a bit easier for me. And you can see I'm not worried about if my lines are straight. This part really doesn't matter. No one's going to see it. I'm just going to make sure that because I unclipped everything, everyone think is still where I want it. Which it is. And what I'm really trying to do is make sure that this bottom section looks okay. Because if that is, on this design, this is the line that I'm worried about. Everything else is kind of a freeform natural. So things will move around. But this is my straight element of my design. So I'm going to spin that back round and what I'm actually going to do is normally I would use my upholstery thread um, to finish this. But for the corners, because I have so much thread left from the kit, I'm actually just going to use embroidery thread. Um, and this is what I'm going to use for the corners. I just think it will be easier. It's to hand. And why not use what we have? So rather than not every, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice. Not everyone will have threads. If you have upholstery thread, that is what I tend to use because it is thicker. It's a little bit stronger, um, but you can, I do with my Christmas ornaments. If I've got kits, I use the leftovers. So I'm just going to separate these two strands and I've done that completely wrong on camera. So that's all got muddled up, but oh well, no one's perfect. Now, you would have seen my stitching on the back is not perfect. I have done little imperfections in this piece. But realistically, I think the piece will look great. So please, I get so many messages about, oh, my stitching isn't neat. I can't finish it. No. If you want, if you've done the hard work of it, no one is going to notice those little imperfections. No one's going to care that the back is a little bit messy i've got that in places it really doesn't matter okay and if anyone's going to be looking at the back of your stitching and judging it well they're not really a friend are they as far as i'm concerned so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with my first corner now as i said i'm working on the bottom of my piece because this is the part where i want to make sure i get it really really right so i'm going to fold this up and i don't know if you can actually see me but I'm going to fold this up, being careful that I'm not lifting or bending my corner. And then I'm going to fold it in and I'm going to fold it down. 
and really pinch it so I've got a really nice corner okay now I probably don't do this the right way I don't think there is a right way as long as your piece is attached who is going to notice and straight away I've got a huge knot in my thread so oh well why is this always on camera this happens all right we're gonna ignore the huge knot we're gonna pretend I did it on purpose we're just gonna actually just tie a little knot between these two pieces and then we're gonna cut off the piece that is getting in our way because life is too short to be dealing with that stuff bam we don't have that issue anymore so we have the first piece on here what I am doing is I am actually stitching into that corner on the back so no one's going to see the back piece but I'm stitching into it to make sure that I keep that corner neat and I keep it tidy now I tend to stitch my corners and then it depends on what the piece is like um if it is something where it is kind of really precious I don't know if I'm going to like the finishing I might lace the whole of the back generally that's not the case with me what I do is I lace my corners and then I glue down the back because my piece is getting glued to a board no one's going to see this piece it really doesn't matter but just to show you when I lift this up I have got a rounded but a neat corner okay what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab these two pieces and I'm just making sure that my piece is nice and tight just on that corner okay I've just gone up to where my two pieces of fabric meet this piece I can cut off because it's longer than this one um, I'm just gonna glue it down at the end now that's gluing into place what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the other side, still working on the bottom. Now, I tend to normally work in diagonals, but as I said to you at the start, um, I have got a straight line that I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on that bottom line. Sorry, I'm just getting a new piece of thread because where I broke the first piece. Where I've got that piece at the bottom the straight line I'm going to focus on those two corners first because I want to make sure that I get it nice and sharp all the way along okay so at this point I can see that where I've pulled this down a little bit I need to stretch this piece up I've got an extra clip so I can put that one on I'm just going to make sure that my bottom is how I want it to be not everything has to be perfect my piece is not going to be perfect I just want to try and make it work for me we're going to do the same thing again so I push my corner down to keep it flat fold my other piece of fabric up fold in fold in and pinch for a corner and then I am just going to put a knot in my stitching yes I do do knots in my stitching I have not got the time to make sure that this back piece is is neat and tidy um, so as I said I'm stitching my corners I just think stitching my corners makes it a little bit um, of a neater corner I struggle if I'm trying to hot glue my corners um, it just it just really really find it difficult okay just gonna make sure that's tied off and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it over and I'm just going to pinch the corner a little bit into the place that I want it okay so now that that corner's done, I'm just going to work my round way around the piece. I'm just going to go up to the next corner. 
I'm just going to make sure when I take this off, I pull it to where I want it to be. Now there is a, still going to be a little bit of leeway even after I've done the corners, but I just want to make sure that my corners are nice and neat. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add two clips to the bottom now where I want the house line to be. So that way, as I'm working on the top corners, I shouldn't pull that one apart too much. Okay, same thing, press down, go in with one side, go in with the other, pull it as tight as I can get it. And then in the very corner, I'm gonna put my first stitch and then that will pull it nice and tight to a corner. Now, I'm not worrying about the fact that you can see my stitches. I'm not trying to do an invisible stitch. There will be finishers out there that are saying I'm doing this completely wrong. But as my piece is being glued to a board, if I didn't do this video, you guys would never know that this is what it looks like. I just do my finishing it's simple easy to the point I just want to get it done it's not something I really enjoy I enjoy the stitching part and I do like having things on display but the actual finishing part if I had the money to send it to someone I probably would um I just I don't have the money to send it to someone and buy more stitching supplies so I had to learn to finish myself and to be honest, it is so easy. Um, it's just a matter of confidence. And realistically, if I'd gone wrong, it's not the end of the world. But I could always take this off and I could finish it in something else. They're really, as long as you give yourself the space and don't cut too close to your stitching um, and rely on, as I said, like this corner stitching to actually get you your finishing piece you could quite simply take this off and finish it in a different way you could finish it as a pillow if you wanted um you could even frame it you could if i was going to frame something i would probably do it the same way that i'm doing here except that in a frame i might lace down the these sides as well but for the type of finishing that i'm doing i really don't need to lace it this piece has not got loads of lines that I need to keep nice and straight. Um, I don't have to worry about that kind of thing. I just have to worry about that bottom line and keeping it as straight as I can for my finish. Okay. So I'm just going to finish this off. Once again, I'm just knotting a few times at the the bottom and this is really so I have straight corners or as straight as I can get so as you can see my corners when I pull the fabric in that will finish tucking them in but this way I've got a pointed corner what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move my embroidery scissors out of the way so I don't get hot glue on them is I am going to focus first of all on this bottom section which is the one where I need to make sure I get it how I want it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some hot glue behind it yes there are people that say don't use hot glue on your piece but hey if you want to lace the whole piece go ahead and lace it as I said for certain things I do for this piece I really don't need to it will work itself out. So I'm just going to put some more glue under that piece. I'm not using loads of glue. You'll see that I'm just putting a little line of glue. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's picking it up on camera. So I have got my piece as close to the bottom as possible. Yes, my tree roots bend round a little bit, but I want this line as close as possible. Now, because I've done the bottom, I am going to go up and I'm going to work on the top. 
because I want to make sure the piece is straight as possible. Once again, a little bit of glue goes a long way. There is no need to lather your piece in glue. Okay, I'm going to pull that down, make sure that's tight. And here I'm just making sure that my moon doesn't look like I've stretched it too far. And because the way that I do my corners, it kind of does the work for you. So that's why I say put the time in the corners. The rest of it is as easy as anything. I'm just going to take these clips off, move all the clips out the way. And now for the sides. So once again, a little bit of glue. Now you'll see I didn't actually put any interfacing on this piece. I didn't think it needed any interfacing. Um, but you could, if you wanted, do the interfacing before you put your piece on the board. But it's entirely up to you. And there we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make sure any of this excess, you could either cut it off if you wanted to. I don't really need to. Mine's going on a board. It's going to be sticking up slightly. I've got the space for it. But if you're finishing this in a frame, I would cut off some of the bulk. Just being careful that you're not cutting too far into your actual finish piece. And there we go. So there's a few threads where I've just got to pull them off. It's just dust and stuff that's come up from my board. There's a lot of glitter because you'll see the next step is going to involve a lot of glitter. So you can see I have got straight corners around my piece. I hope you can see. Okay. Now my piece is very, very tight to the edge. You could loosen yours up if you want to. But that is my piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get my wooden board back. Hopefully that should be dry now because there was only a little bit of paint on that. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to mount this on the board. And we're going to move on to the final finishing little pieces. Okay, so I brought back over my finishing piece. Now this is all dry. Okay, everything is all dry now. And I'm going to have my piece sitting in the center as much as I can get it but you'll see my piece has got the raised story and there was no way I was going to try and pull off those letters so what I am going to do is I don't want my piece bending over time when I have it in storage so what I have is somewhere I have an off cut of my sticky board and what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna grab my other pair of blue scissors which is there and I'm just gonna cut some little strips now making sure that these scissors are not your nice fabric scissors they look like my fabric scissors but these ones are the other pair um, because this will kill your scissors eventually and I'm just going to cut this piece up, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my board back to see how much space I have on either side. So, I'm going to glue two of these together. All I'm going to do for that is just put some hot glue down the centre and just stick it on. This does not need to be perfect. No one is going to see it. It is just there to add some support and make sure my piece stays fairly flat-ish on the board okay what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide these in to make sure I can get them roughly where I want them you will see the placement of this board I have got more space at the top than I have the bottom that's because I'm going to add a bow at the top of mine if you didn't want to do the bow um, then just make sure your piece is centered on the board if you are finishing this way I don't know if you are you could be finishing it in a completely different way okay 
and then I'm just going to place these as close as possible back down. And this way, it just makes it a little bit flatter on the board. Now, as I said, I use two types of glue for gluing my piece down. I use my hot glue, which is going to be my quick adherent adherent piece, my quick adhesive piece even. And I'm using the UHE Cola Universal Glue. And the reason I use this one is I just like the fact that this one seems to keep my pieces to the boards and to my finishing piece. Whereas my glue, I guess if I had like a better glue, um, hot glue, then it might work. But like, that's really just going to glue it down quickly. It's It could fall off afterwards. What I'm going to do with this one is I am just going to put it on the letters. I'm not doing this neat or tidy because, as I said, there's going to be other things. I don't want too much glue. I'm just putting a little bit just so it is held onto my board. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some dollops of hot glue on top and the reason that I do both is my hot glue will hold my piece why I'm trying to work on the other areas but the other glue when it sets will hold the piece down and it will stay down okay just gonna try and center that up as best as I can and where I want it remembering that I want more space at the top and the bottom and then I am just going to push down so I didn't put anything down the sides here I guess well really I don't really need it I just needed something for the top and bottom because the letters finish here so the letters are holding that centerpiece up but the top and bottom just needed a little bit of extra support and what I would normally do if I wasn't filming this is I would put a book on this and I would walk away and come back a little bit later on. I tend to do my finishing in stages. I generally will finish multiple things. It would be like a little, um, what, what's the word, like a conveyor belt system where I would do all of my painting. I would leave it to dry overnight, like the baseboard, which is what I did. I painted it last night. I've left it to dry overnight. I then come back in and I will do my effect, but I will do it on all of my boards. So if I'm, I will do like a few finishing pieces. Um, so all of my painting will be done. Any effect work will then be done. I then leave that to dry and I lace all of my pieces. Um, I then would glue them down, move this one to a side, glue another one down. So it would probably have about 15 minutes in between the pieces to have everything set but because I'm filming this I want to try and get this video done uh, we're currently 11.59 so I think I've been doing this maybe for about 45 minutes but I'm not 100% certain of that so I picked up a few different pieces from the range now I knew I wanted to go with the witchy vibe rather than like the Gaulish Halloweenish vibe. So I found these. These are small glitter spider picks. I think these were like one ninety nine or something. Yes, they are going to get glitter. Sorry, I've just not the camera. They are going to get glitter on my piece, but that always comes off. Um, I just thought this was so witchy to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the piece off. I do have two of these. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to use both or if I was going to cut this up. I think I might just use both. Sorry, I'm using rubbish scissors to try and cut the knot of this twine off because no one needs the tag on it. So I don't know if I'm going to need... I will need to arrange these, but I don't know if I'm going to need to cut these down or can I make it work with just how it is and I'm gonna have to stand up for this part because I can't actually see what I'm doing I actually think I quite like that I quite like how they lay over the top of this piece and in the center I can work on my bow so 
I think what I'm going to actually do is I'm actually going to glue those down. But to glue these down, I'm going to do the same technique. I'm going to use both glues. But I need to be careful not to get in my way. So what I actually might do is I've got some of that ecru. I could just pour off, actually, maybe I pull off a darker colour. Where did my threads go? I'm actually going to pull off this 3799, which is also from the kit. Oh, actually, it's 535. Sorry, I lied. No, I do want the dark one. I'm just going to pull this off. And I think I've got glue on my hand because the whole thing wants to get stuck to my hand. Right, move that to one side. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tie these together how I want them with this string because no one's going to see it at the end of the day. So I'm just going to wrap this round because this will just help me glue it into place. And I'm really sorry, the shadows are getting really bad, but it is practically midnight now. So, whoops, and I've just knocked my light over. Okay, that is now left a ton of glitter on my thing. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue just to hold that in place. Okay, now I can still sort these sprigs out afterwards and that will be something I'll be playing with. But what I do need to do is I need to glue this down. So I'm going to take my glue once again. Now this glue always just starts coming out, so I'm just going to mind it out the way of everything. and making sure that I don't get this on my fabric because that will not be very nice. So I've done that one. Going straight in with my hot glue. Now the picks are always the most difficult to stick down. Everything else will stick nicely. These things don't want to stick and stay down on anything. So I'm just going to hold this just for a second. This is why once again I have used the hot glue as well as my UHU glue, I think. Yeah, UHU because that will hold it into place. Okay, now it is gonna bounce back up until it's completely dry. What I will do at the end of my finishing is I will actually stick something heavy on this um, just to help it finish up. But I picked up these velvet Halloween ribbons from the range as well. Um, I think these were I don't know, maybe a pound, one pound fifty. Um, and I am going to make a bow out of these. So I'm not even measuring this. I am just cutting a strip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my ends together. Because it, unlike my other wire ribbon, this has not got wire in it. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same with purple because I do want to bring some purple into this. Now, there is no purple in this design, but in my Halloween finishes, I do have purple. So this is going to tie in with other finishes, which is going to help make my cross stitching look like it's meant to be together. So once again, I'm going to fold this and then fold this in half. And that will then give me my smaller ribbon. And when I bring this all together, they, they, it is very thick because I have so many ribbons on it. It will then just fit straight in to the centre of my piece. Now, I do need to check, is this going to be too small for my other piece? Because, oops, I do have a rose here. I like the idea of the rose. Mm, it might be. We're just going to see. Because what I would normally use is I would normally use a wire ribbon. But I don't have any in colours that would work for this. Um, And I didn't want to buy a ribbon just for this piece, if that makes sense. 
So I'm going to crush this up. My piece may actually be too big for this, but we're just going to go with it because that's the type of person I am. What I'm going to do is I am actually just playing now. So I'm going to see, do I like this bow on it? If not, I'm going to get rid of the bow and we'll just do something else. It really, like, there is no rules. I can do this however I want to do it. I just grabbed another thread from the leftover threads I have. Okay, and it is just forming the shape of my bow. I'm going to be covered in glitter for like the next week after doing this. Those glitter picks have got so much glitter on them. Okay, I'm going to pop that straight down. I put some hot glue on that one. I actually do, I quite like that. So I'm going to put some hot glue on the back of this rose. And this rose is a foam rose. It is also from the range. Where did I just put the packaging? Um, this is another pick. This is Halloween roses. And this was like £1. Again, one ninety nine. I think. Um, you could just use it as it is. I'm just going to be using certain parts of it. So. Let's wipe the glitter off. And let's have a look at what we have so far. So we have the picks here. I can play with these. I can mould these round. I actually kind of like that spider coming over and sitting on the side. I might actually just glue that one on a little bit more. Might glue that if I can. He might not want to stay there though. He's not going to want to stay. Trying to glue on glitter is never easy. So I'm just going to push him down. He will stay. There we go. Once again, when they're a bit flatter, they'll behave a little bit more. And then on the other side, I'm going to want to do a little bit of something similar because I do like to make my things match a little bit. What one can I bring around? I might actually bring him round and rather than glue him to the board, I might just glue him to the pick itself. So we're going to hold this down again. I'm hoping this finish, this actually films because obviously I've now FFO'd this piece. I don't really want to take it apart to redo it. So let's hope this actually works. As I said, this is like the first time that I've tried doing this um I'm open to trying more because as I said I do finish my pieces so I am open to doing more finishing videos I don't know if they will be similar to this because I just finish things how I want to finish them um but we go from there so let me move the light so hopefully you can see this a little bit more so I've got my glitter picks of spiders very simple didn't have to do anything they were already made I've got my, I've got hot glue all over my hand. I've got my two velvet ribbons. That's just to bring some colour into this piece. Um, and then I've got my black rose. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to add something at the bottom. Now, I did pick up these, but I'm not sure if I want to use them or whether it's going to be too much. So, sorry about the crinkle. These are glitter craft spiders that I also picked up from the range. They're $1.99. Um, I'm really not sure if I'm going to want to use them or not. So what we're going to do is just pull one off. Oh my god, there's glitter everywhere. Actually, I kind of... Do I like that? These are... I'm not sure if I want to put that on just purely because there's glitter everywhere. So we're going to pull that one back off. But I do have one second. I'm just going to dig around in this plastic bag next to me. I will be one second. I was in um, B&M and I found 
these ones these were two pound and these are flocked so they're not gonna have as much glitter on them because i feel like i have a lot of glitter on my piece already so let's just pull that's a bit too big let's pull one of the small ones off and see how i feel about a small one okay how the hell like this is like you know when kids get the toys at christmas and you have to sit there and try and unpack the toys and they never want to come out the packaging this is what's happening with these spiders right now right he's too big oh but he could work i could add some of these on okay let's let's try and fight with a few more of these now i do love the ones that i picked up from the range but that the one that I just unwrapped this one but the glitter is just going to be an absolute nightmare on that this glitter is kind of stuck on but that black one the minute you touched it so much glitter came off of it that I just that's just not going to work for my cross stitching I don't mind wiping a little bit of glitter off while I'm making it because I know that it's not unless I move the piece around too much which this one's going to be up it's not going to be on anything um i think i'll get away with it right i actually quite like those so because these are quite lightweight i'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on their bellies and we're just gonna glue them straight down sorry if you don't like spiders i maybe should have done a little caution once again i'm not worried if there's a little bit of hot glue on the actual board um because like right that's coming off so what i'm going to do with that one is because the hot glue isn't going to hold it on its own we're just gonna pile up some other glue careful not to get it on the cross stitch fabric and we're going to pin that hold that down now that is going to take some time to set so that will be left overnight, um, pinned down like it is now. But that will just help hold that piece down. This one seems to have set okay. Now you can see the hot glue, but realistically, it just looks like spider webs. That's why I'm not being neat with the spiders and the hot glue, because any parts that you see is just going to look like spider webs. And when it's up on the wall, you're really not going to notice it too much. So... What I'm going to do with all of my pieces, um, I'm going to just try and lint roll this and get the glitter off. I'm going to put some weight on it. I'm going to leave it overnight because it is currently 12.14. I think it's been about an hour, which realistically is not long time. If you think how many hours you put into your stitching piece, taking an hour to finish something. And this was so simple. So what I'm going to do is... I will come back tomorrow morning and I'll film the intro. I'll also film the little outro. Um, but just to recap, I have used a wooden board from the range. Um, I will try and list it down below if it's still available. We have laced a piece which I put on to a sticky board, a press on board. You could use whatever. You could use a foam board. Um, you could use any brand of sticky board um i just find whatever's on offer at that time i have put a piece of felt underneath you could buy a felt craft sheet if you wanted i just had felt scraps so that's what i've used i have laced the corners so that way i've got neat points and then i glued the edge for the finishing at the top i have two of the ranges spider picks um I don't know if those are still going to be available. If I can, I will list them down below. I've used two pieces of the Halloween Fell Ribbon in the purple and black. I've used one of the rose um, roses off the pick. I still have loads of others of this, so I could do other finishes the same with the ribbon. Um, this is the second pick. And then I've just used three little um, spiders from B&M. Um, 
you don't have to put these on i just put them on that is the vibe that i am going for so i will come back tomorrow when it is a lot better light because it is way too late um but it's taken me i think about an hour to do this and while i'm on camera so normally i would have a movie on and it probably wouldn't take me as much time but i've tried to explain it as best as i can so i will come back tomorrow when it is better light i will do it early morning before work and hopefully i'll be able to show you a little bit better how this gorgeous finish looks because this piece is stunning i'm really really happy with how this turned out and i cannot wait to get this up on display um I think the kids, the students are going to love it. I, I'm going to love it. I'm going to have it up in my room for a little while first. But yeah, it was a gorgeous stitching on. I absolutely loved it. If, As I said, if you want to get your hands on this, it is available as a PDF on Claire's website, Love Poppet. I will have that listed down below. I'm going to go for now and I will just add, you'll see edited clips of the start and the end of this. Hopefully this video makes sense, but... I have tried my best to do a finishing video for this piece so I'm still holding the spider down because until I get some weight on it he's not going to stay but there we go let me know down in the comment section below if you are finishing this piece how you're going to finish it if you've joined in the sow and let me know do you want to see more finishing videos on this channel they would be similar to this it would just be me turning the camera on and trying to explain as I finish something um, and just kind of playing around and seeing how things go together. But if you want to see more of that, please give this video a thumbs up and um, leave a comment below. And hopefully you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.